Alright, so this is the third video of my four-part supplementation series, and before I continue, I'd just like to remind everybody that these are supplements, so in order for you to receive the full benefit, you still need to follow a whole food, non-processed, real diet, as well as a proper exercise routine. Okay, so I have shared with you guys how much I love my maca, and how much I love my spirulina, and now today I'm going to share with you guys my third supplement I cannot live without, and that's probiotics. And thanks to the crude activity, you guys have probably heard about probiotics, maybe you don't understand why they're so good for you, basically they balance your inner gut health, okay, they provide us good bacteria. And remember, in order for us to have the body we want, the beauty we want, the mind we want, we have to have our, our inner health balanced. So basically, just remember probiotics balance our gut health, and that's all you need to know basically. Okay, so I definitely though wouldn't recommend your source of probiotics to be activity as somebody because a lot of us are uh, lactose intolerant, lactose sensitive like myself, and also too, I just don't pro think it provides a good environment for probiotics to thrive. I definitely re recommend taking a probiotic supplement, but that as far as a lot of people ask me where I get my probiotics, but the thing is that's a, probiotics is another thing. You have to figure out what chain of probiotics works for you best, so that's when you might want to work with a doctor or or you might just, if you're diligent enough, try to figure it out yourself. But there is another source of probiotics that everybody can take advantage of now, and that is through fermenting foods. Now, you have probably seen this. A lot of people do it with sauerkraut. My favorite way to ferment food is pickles. I love pickles, and I love pickle juice, and it's just so easy. I find it the easiest way to ferment, okay? So first, what you're going to do is you're going to start off with a jar. You can use a regular fermentation jar. I'm going to use a mason jar. You can even use an old pickle jar, okay? So I'm going to use a mason jar just to make sure it's, like, sterile and clean. All right, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take a cucumber. I, this is one vegetable I definitely would recommend that you do an organic um, cu uh, cu cucumber. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to cut your cucumber to about the shapes of um, what you would a pickle, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're just going to stuff this cucumber in our jar. Now, it's really, the best is really to just pack this in there because what we're going to do is we're going to fill it with water and if you if it's not packed then the bed, the pickles will float to the top but that's okay if that does happen because you really it's really important to cover the pickles with water if that happens you can just kind of weigh it down with an onion all right so there you go. All right, so now what we're going to do is we now need to add our Brin solution. The way to make a Brin solution is with uh, spring or distilled water. You don't want to use uh, any kind of fluoride metal water. And you want to add sea salt to it. Now, you would, what you do is maybe say like a pint to one teaspoon. But what I would do is start with one teaspoon of sea salt, adding it to your water, swish it around, taste it a little bit. And then um, what you're looking for, you're not looking for a salty, you're looking for like in between nasty, like tasty and gross, okay? So you just kind of have to play with it. I think I've added, I've added two teaspoons to like this, like a cup or two of water. And now we're just going to go ahead and pour it in our, on our pickles, okay? So you want to make sure you cover your pickles, all right? And then another important thing is you want to leave um, about an inch of space on the top to allow the gas to release, all right? And now all we have to do is seal it tightly, all right? So, and what you're going to take, the, the fermentation process at least takes three days. You have to sit somewhere at room temperature, no less than 70 degrees. Test it out after three days. It really kind of depends. The fermentation process might be a shorter time in the summer, or and it could be like a slower time. Uh, yeah, it could be take longer in the cold temperatures. But what you're doing here, that after three days, go ahead and test your pickle. And if you feel like it's crunchy enough and you're like, okay, I'm ready for these pickles, they're going to be great, go ahead and stick in the fridge. Being in the fridge doesn't necessarily stop the fermentation process, so you're still going to create that a lot of healthy bacteria, but you're going to maintain the crispness of the pickle. Um, but if it's not, if you still feel like it could take longer, go ahead and sit it out. This, the longer you, you have it out, the better the fermentation process, okay? But, you know, we don't like soggy pickles, right? So, um, and then you can see after a while, it's still look kind of like nice and foggy. And this one, I actually did have to put it on the end on top of my pickles because it, the pickles um, uh, floated to the top. So, and this is something I enjoy. Um, enjoy the, you can get healthy bacteria from the pickles and you can get healthy bacteria from the pickle juice, which I will share with you guys tomorrow in my L shot of courage.